Uh, hello, everybody. Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, maybe for someone is uh, good evening uh, from everyone who is uh, watching us live on Facebook. My name is Alina and I am part of Dream Up Steam. And today for a couple of like briefly 20 minutes, we'll have a small talk about um, what is Accelerator. We'll talk about um, um, the program a, a little bit. And also we have uh, an amazing, interesting interview uh, uh, with one of the mentors that you will uh, meet uh, uh, right in a couple of uh, minutes. So before that, uh, let me um, uh, talk and introduce uh, the program that now that we are uh, having and promoting recruiting right now. Uh, it is called Accelerator. Um, we believe here in um, Dream Apps that you have to build a meaningful startup with a global network of mentors and a proven plan, which means that the core value of uh, what we want to promote is that you have to believe in what are you doing. Um, and also we have a special plan for it prepared for you. Um, during the four months, you will have the chance to connect uh, live um, and having Q&As with lots of mentors, more than 40 in our program. Uh, you will have the chance to have one-to-one -one, uh, mentorship with them. Um, they are experts from uh, starting from like IT domain, like marketing, um, revenues, fundraising. So you'll have chance to ask thousands, dozens of questions and for sure you have the chance to raise up your uh, business. Um, also, you'll uh, receive feedback because, of course, what kind of program do we have without having some assignments and putting some effort in it, right? So you'll have more than, uh, um, uh, you'll have lots of tasks to do and you'll receive um, uh, special and valuable feedback and also for you to uh, develop and grow. Uh, you'll have the chance to uh, interact, of course, with other founders of startups uh, by um, applying this kind of peer-to-peer -peer education. And nonetheless, you'll have the chance in the end to build your own pitch deck and uh, you'll have the chance maybe, and not maybe, but like you'll have the chance to um, um, pitch your uh, startup idea to uh, potential investors. Uh, briefly about uh, accelerator numbers, as I mentioned before, it will be a four months program uh, in um, divided in 16 models um, with the help and uh, the guidance of more than 40 mentors. Uh, you'll spend on that like more than 500 hours. Uh, so, and also you'll have more than 200 assignments to, um, to do uh, in also to, in, in order to um, uh, have uh, the results that you are expecting. Um, so all the assignments that you will have to uh, do, uh, they are uh, created and um, uh, they are, they will be put on the e-learning platform at Factory. And this is how it looks like this. I hope you are seeing my screen. Uh, it's very colorful and beautiful on the inside and also <laughs> beautiful on the outside. Um, so as I mentioned, like there are 16 models you'll uh, develop your idea and you'll understand why your startup should be scalable. Uh, you'll try to understand who are the customers and people that are interested in uh, your idea, how to um, go to them, like how to find them, um, how to create your visualization, your branding, your logo, how to be remarkable and memorable. Um, so like you'll have a very interesting journey and a very full and intense one. Uh, but trust me in the end on the graduate demo day, you will understand that uh, all the effort, it was paid off and um, the network and the mentors and the knowledge that you received will be um, uh, will be paid off. So here you can see that we had in the first batch that it was last year, uh, more than 40 mentors, more than amazing mentors and uh, stay tuned for uh, uh, getting to know more of them that we have for 2021 20, year and the second batch of the accelerator. Um, in the first batch as well, we had uh, 13 um, startups that graduated and here are like some of their logos, but uh, also like uh, their, um, uh, how to say, presence are it's still relevant and we are very proud of them. 
Um, so I just want to remind you guys that, and girls, uh, that we have um, uh, the recruiting right now, uh, still the program is uh, um, uh, trying to find the founders. Uh, so the deadline for the application program is uh, on 28th of uh, February. Uh, the program will be a part like it will be during uh, 21st, uh, 22 March, uh, July 20. Um, so uh, also you have to like the accelerator has a fee, which is $199 so per startup, like per idea. Um, so if you are one or solo founder or like there are more founders, it is up to you to come up with um, the idea and uh, let everything after that, like all the aftermath to be history. Um, so yeah, build a meaningful startup uh, and uh, uh, we'll help you here at Accelerator. Um, as I said, the deadline is uh, February 28th. Uh, so follow us on social media, which is Accelerator on Instagram and Facebook as well. And now we are having uh, the great and amazing moment. Um, we have uh, with us uh, Igor Ovcherenko, who is also the founder um, and CEO at Scalator. Um, he is uh, also a mentor that uh, will be in um, Accelerator Batch 2. Uh, he is right now with us. Uh, I would like him to uh, appear and uh, to see hello. him a little bit. Igor, hello. How are you? Yeah. Hey, Dina. All good. Thank you. And thanks for having me. Uh, thank you for being with us right now. We are very honored and uh, deeply, deeply thankful for you being with us. So no as I mentioned, uh, Igor is a startup enthusiast and uh, he has more than eight years, um, more than eight years of experience in developing startups ecosystem. Uh, so uh, let's meet him for today. Um, so uh, you'll be uh, the mentor of the scalability model, like, uh, as I mentioned, one of those 16 that founders have to go through. Um, so I'd like to ask you to tell me more about your background. Uh, how did you end up being in startup, like starting from this? How, how did all things uh, like started? Uh, absolutely by kind of like occasion. I didn't intend to go to startups. Actually, when I joined uh, the most prominent uh, venture fund in Ukraine, Back in 2012, I didn't know nothing about startups, tech entrepreneurship, venture investing. And I just went there by like a, by, by some sort of like a destiny, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. I went there to organize an event, uh, which is called IDC, Investor Day Central Eastern Europe. My background um, in, in organizing events was not that good at the moment. I mean, I was just doing some events for my friends and, and so close, close surrounding. And I was recommended to that uh, company. And eventually I opened a new whole world of, you know, tech entrepreneurship, venture investing and all of that. And luckily I was uh, part of the team that organized one of top five events in Europe in uh, startups and investors according to TechCrunch back in 2012. So yeah, it was just kind of like a, a, a luck, I believe, that I started that journey. And since that time, I've always been involved in the um, developing of startup ecosystem, tech entrepreneurship, supporting the startups, build, being some sort of like a, a bridge in between the entrepreneurs and the investors and the media and other entrepreneurs in, in various locations. Um, and 2015, I joined Seed Stars, which is uh, organizing some sort of like a, uh, you can call it Olympic Games for uh, seed stage startups from emerging markets. And I was managing the region of Central Eastern Europe, Middle East and North Africa, constantly traveling in between countries in, in that those countries in that region in search of the best entrepreneurs that would, you know, go to Switzerland to a final event. And there were a couple of companies from, from Moldova as well that joined Seed Stars uh, in, back in the day. And um, after that, I um, started my own company, uh, which is helping the companies that raised uh, Series A, Series, like later Series A stage funding to go to new markets, specifically the markets that are like in emerging right now. I'm talking about the bigger ones like South Africa, Turkey, uh, and others where basically what we're helping with is to set up the operations 
I'll put in the company, the bank accounts and stuff like that. Like, you know, all this kind of technicality, like legal stuff, but also will happen to hire the first people uh, like managing directors and, and salespeople on the ground. We're working only with B2B and B2G type of companies that really need to scale fast. That's why I guess you invited me to talk about the scalability and, um, uh, you know, share my knowledge in that field. I have also been involved in consulting the governmental organizations in, in Kazakhstan and other places where we were developing the startup ecosystem from the government perspective, which was also a very interesting experience. We were creating this um, special um, taxation uh, zones, open IT techno parks, open the uh, business angel clubs and stuff like that. So I have like a different types of experience that I'm happy to share with your participants of the program. That would be amazing. I think you are the perfect person for the perfect time for the perfect moment. Uh, so um, like we also had uh, this kind of debate in our team, uh, why, um, and I would like you to also uh, share your opinion, why, um, why people should uh, build this like we are talking all the time about scalable. The startup has to be scalable. It has to be uh, powerful and stuff. So I'd like you to share, like, uh, what are the benefits actually to like if you build a, a startup and it will be like a scalable one? Like, is every business out there like a scalable one? Of, like, what's the deal with this? Well, definitely not every single company that is created is scalable. Moreover, every nine out of 10 companies that have started uh, yearly are failing and just like being closed. So this is definitely a privilege if you are able to scale your company to new markets. It's not necessarily some sort of like a an award or some sort of like a good thing to have on your resume or something. It's more about your business. I mean, if your local market is big enough for you to do the, the impact or the, um, you know, like to, to help solve some sort of a problem in your current market and you don't need to scale to new locations, this is also fine. Um, again, depending on the, the company, the type of the problem they're solving and the, um, the interest of the founders. That is the important thing. Um, one thing to mention here, I think there are a couple of different types of, of uh, founders. I really admire those who really want to make an impact. And I believe recently since 2018, around that time, it's been a trend where people actually thinking about doing something meaningful for the humanity, for for people like to do this kind of like social entrepreneurship, win-win kind of a business models where you can actually impact millions of lives. And uh, when I was working back in the day with Seed Stars, I really like their mission when they were impacting people's lives in emerging markets. This is really true. The, they were support and they are supporting the entrepreneurs that are actually uh, solving the real world problems. Uh, like. Um, if you check that again, some trends from, from Silicon Valley, most of the time, the companies that are coming out of that area these days are the, the ones that are creating a problem for you and then solving it. So not necessarily you would want this or, uh, there's just like a nice thing to have, but not necessarily they are actually focused on, uh, the, the problems of the millions and billions of people around the world. Um, like, I don't know, like, um, there could be a bunch of examples, but like, you know, there is like, people do still have problems with the mobility, with access to the finances around the world. I'm talking about emerging markets these days and underdeveloped markets as well. So, uh, not necessarily the guys in Silicon Valley still think about, you know, those guys, they would rather think about the U S and, and more developed markets. So I really admire and adore those entrepreneurs that are working on solving real world uh, uh, problems. Again, as, a, as an individual, the only, the biggest, um, the most precious asset that we always is time. And uh, you have a choice, either you create a startup to, to impact millions of lives, or you create a startup to make money, or you create a startup just to show off in front of some, some some people in, in your uh, local neighborhood. So it's up to you, but the idea is that we're living once and I would rather focus on something that could actually help the, uh, like to, to solve like bigger problems, let's put it this way. 
In uh, so like, I just wanted to wrap it up like, oh, the sc scalability, what does it mean to you? Or like, what is the term of it? Because maybe there are people who don't know what, what does actually mean this term. So if you can make it like in one sentence, uh, like a sm sm like small, uh, uh, how does it know, like explanation. Yeah, so a scalability, I'm not sure there is like a, we should check the Investopedia for that, but I'm not sure there is like a, a certain term that is already outlined there. But the idea is that this is an ability for a company to be able to start the operations in various locations successfully and uh, a ability to, um, to, again, to solve the problems that is universal or cross-border uh, kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. uh, again, every single startup should start with a problem, like why are you actually doing this, why you want to solve this, and then only think about how you do this. Again, in post-Soviet countries uh, or CAS countries, uh, there is a mentality that we usually tend not to do this like customer research and we just like build something overnight, amazing technology, but it turns out very often that this technology is not necessarily in demand which is a big problem again for this like post post cis mm -hmm. country that's why i really highly um motivate everyone to start with why and and go talk to the potential customers figuring out the real pain and then start thinking about the solution so um yeah coming back to scalability again um there are just like, you know, you can scale the business models, you can scale the innovation, you can scale uh, the, the technology uh, that, that again, depends on each and every um, different type of a company. Let's okay. see what kind of companies you'll have in your new batch and uh, let's see how we can be helpful to them. Uh, I can't wait to uh, get to know them as well. So um, as we said that the name of the, um, of the, um, uh, uh, event today is um, how to develop a startup ecosystem. Uh, now I just I'd like to see how do you see, uh, like I wanted to ask you, how do you see the evolution of startup ecosystem in Central Eastern Europe, uh, especially like in our countries, Moldova, Ukraine, Romania, like it is good, it is bad. Um, like uh, also like we had a pandemic year and we're still in pandemic like uh, situation. How do you feel like on, on your side? Yeah, I mean, uh, luckily, as I mentioned earlier, I've been able to travel in around the region and able to see, was able to see the differences in, di in the development of different startup ecosystems. And uh, I must say there are different like uh, patterns and, uh, uh, and things that I've seen in various locations. I will be more than happy to share with you. But the, the main thing is that um, every single country is different and has different approaches. In some countries, the government support is very high. In some countries, the donor support is very high. Let's say in, like in, in, in Moldova, for instance, there is no government support in Ukraine for the startup ecosystem, which is great as well. <laughs> uh, that gave okay. us, yeah, that gave, uh, at least they didn't interrupt. They didn't interfere in the development of startup mm -hmm. ecosystem in my country. And uh, with the help of private sector, we have now what we actually have with these unicorns and you know like a full-blown startup system it's not like yet like berlin london and stuff like that but we do have the talent we do have unicorns we do have the full-fledged you know um, investment vehicles and full-fledged like investment cycles over there uh, in ukraine so again depending on on, on the location uh, it differs a lot um, there are countries like for instance kazakhstan that has a, a vast support from the government is actually pushed by the government all this startup ecosystem they are creating all these uh, techno parks and providing spaces for free providing grants providing equity free accelerator incubator programs uh, angel investors support angel investors funds like everything and um, we'll see how it will go um, so far I, I can tell you that there is like again a trend where um, there's, let's say there's a um, like Athlon, like a ma main kind of like ecosystem to watch at, which is Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. And then we can say that some of the countries are behind in several, in, in certain amount of time, like in, in years. So let's say uh, Russia is like, I don't know, like uh, 10 years behind or like 15 years behind. But again, this is something that we could discuss. But again, um, one thing to mention here is that Silicon Valley is, is not replicable. 
uh, this is something unique and will stay there. Um, okay. I think what we can compare uh, is each other. So let's say we can compare, let's say Poland to, to Moldova or Poland to, to Russia or something like that. Again, if you ask me like a, a more direct question in regards to this ecosystem, I'll be more than happy to share. But one thing that I would really outline as a common trait around the, 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 the region is that we are great in tech like in tech skills, amazing stuff is coming out of this of this part of the world. Not necessarily we are able to to sell it correctly and to package this correctly. And uh, again, if you look at the um, good examples of the companies coming out of Ukraine, uh, the founders uh, would be very uh, charismatic. Uh, they are kids of some diplomats or studied abroad. They hired some international people from early, early on. And um, those are like the most successes. That was back in the day. These days, it's more and more people that actually building great companies, uh, being just like, you know, regular Ukrainians, let's put it this way, studying in Ukraine and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, I mean, I was thinking about creating this kind of like a link in between the Middle East and uh, the CIS countries and the centuries in Europe, just because the guys in the Middle East know how to sell. They are best in that one. Not necessarily as good in tech part. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes they oversell and they're selling this like features which not necessarily exist yet or cannot be implemented at all. But from another side, you have people like Ukrainians and I don't know, like Czech and, and, and Romanians and, and, and mm -hmm. Moldovan. So like people who can create amazing tech, but they just don't know how to sell. So my idea was like to somehow combine those uh, people and uh, see how this will um, play around. So far, uh, there's just like a couple of good examples, uh, but uh, I hope this will come more and we become more universal and more interconnected with other regions like Middle East, etc. Somehow like you basically uh, uh, asked uh, my question because I had a follow up question like what are the transport startups in, in our region? And you basically said like basically that uh, on a global scale, people are more focused like on social entrepreneurship and like basically in like our central uh, Eastern Europe, we are more focused like not focused, but we are good at technology and we just have to work on like uh, packaging and to make it uh, uh, more visible out there. Uh, somehow well, we know that yeah. like, as you mentioned, um, we have like USA with the Silicon Valley, we have China and India with lots of lots of unicorns companies uh, that are more evaluated uh, uh, for $1 billion. Um, and also we have like in Ukraine as well. And in Romania, there is one unicorn. Uh, how to like, uh, what we have to do in order to raise the number of uh, unicorns in Europe or maybe in our region, who knows? Like, what do you think are the more three um, um, values or skill that we have to um, like just beat them up and uh, make us uh, really, really um, outstanding. Well, first, I would say that we need to accept the failures or even adore failures. Mm -hmm. If you look at the, um, at the success stories, not necessarily um, the um, companies that have become the unicorns are the first companies of the founders very often this is like third and fourth company so i think in our mentality it's still hard to accept the failure and um from all the perspectives like from from family from friends from investors investing in and, and and you know like the whole kind of um, health of this um approach to failure is a bit tough and I would say wrong in, in our part of the world. So I would mm -hmm. first of all uh, say that we need to accept, uh, we need to learn and maybe teach how to accept the failures because the failures is the best way to become uh, successful. Mm -hmm. And basically I believe that if you are like two, three times, let's say you are like first the companies failed, the third is already more or less company and you create the fourth company, this company could become a unicorn. I mean, it has more chances because your experience will be way more relevant. So this is one. Second one, I would say that um, create a healthy competition, which is also important. Um, and we need to teach people how to accept a competition, how to uh, do it and how to, how to work around this competition, right? So um, again, 
you can um, uh, to become a unicorn you need to uh, have a like a big valuation right for that you either raise a lot of money and uh, scale or you do some sort of like m a's of other smaller companies so mm -hmm. basically you need to understand who your competitors and be ready to either you know um, merge and acquire them and um, or be acquired by 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 someone else so i need i think we also need to teach people on like how do you work around the competition and how do you do this in the you know like from day one on a global scale with the intent to build a unicorn company and the third uh, thing is people um which is again i think there is a trend already where uh, people from this our region the ce coming back from silicon valley london israel and other places coming back home i mean mm -hmm. to do something good for their own lives for their own countries and, and this is amazing trend and uh, you know you cannot build a unicorn without an amazing team uh, it's important to have a, a a skilled people on the ground but not necessarily we do have them enough and with this relevant experience in C region so very often you have to hire some sort of you know uh, people from uk or us to kind of help you with uh, building the company uh, so I would say uh, try to attract and bring back the, you know, the Ukrainians and other people from, uh, from Silicon Valley back to, to our region so they could first um, get back to give back to the community and uh, reinvest the money they made somewhere else and uh, join some teams that they could actually make them successful and make them unicorns. This, those are three things I would mention. I hope everyone who is watching uh, right now or like watch us later will be like, okay, let me know that. <laughs> That's a good insight. Thank you very much. It was very, very um, interesting. And um, I would like just to wrap it up with the last question. Um, as I mentioned, we are recruiting for Absolute program. Uh, I wanted to ask you why it is important for a person who has a startup idea or who has already like founded um, a small business or a startup and it failed and why it should like people should join an accelerator of like uh, what what is the importance of it like what would you gain if you'll be part in the, in an accelerator well first this is uh, it's gonna save your time uh, because you're gonna make a lot of mistakes by doing something yourself uh, you're gonna meet people that will be able to show you shortcuts and show you the potential issues that you're gonna have to overcome and they will give you some hints and tricks on support on how to do this so basically uh, you can make a lot of mistakes uh, you can spend years in doing these mistakes or you can come to use an accelerator that can actually uh, prevent you from doing this and put you on the right path straight away so this is number one is a save of your time um, a lot of the accelerators are providing uh, access to amazing resources like uh, people like mentors and others uh, which could which could become your um, advisory board members or even joining your teams full time so this is a good way to recruit people at least to your advisory board at max as you know full time full blown kind of like uh, team members the third thing um, some accelerators are providing the funding which is also important. Again, this is this is a trade-off. They're providing funding, but this is very early stage. Therefore, they're getting equity. Usually, it's like a big amount of equity. Uh, but but this is the price you pay for this uh, acceleration and the shortcuts and stuff. So this is definitely a, 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 a payoff. So I think this is um, uh, the main reasons. Also, uh, important one is to be in an environment where you are meeting other entrepreneurs that are, are going through the same challenges or similar challenges like you like the challenge of recruiting the right people or uh, doing the right tech or like sales or other things and you can learn way more from them rather than you know like doing, reading books watching videos or even talk some some of the mentors again depending on the people you're going to meet at the program and uh, I think those like the the main three things that uh, the, the benefits of accelerator. 
that could bring to you. Thank you so much for being with us. Uh, we are very thankful and uh, can't wait to see you in the accelerator. Um, and uh, it was very insightful and um, very, uh, how to say, it, like very uh, to the point. And uh, thank you again for your um, dedicating your time with us. Uh, and, uh, and a small reminder again for people apply to accelerator. Uh, the applications are still open. And yeah, uh, we'll be in touch and uh, stay tuned, everyone. Uh, thank you for being with yeah. us again, Igor, and see you soon. Thank you. thank you, Alina. Thanks for having me. And I hope that uh, the next program will be in person and I will come back to, to Moldova. Can't wait. Sure. Bye-bye. Okay. Cheers. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye.